Hey guys, welcome back to another video in this flame game development series where we are making a simple platformer game using the flame engine. So in the last video, we used the overlay builder map to add some menus to this game. These menus basically allow players to navigate between different states of the game. Now in this video, we are going to focus on the settings menu. I'll keep this menu simple and will just display two toggles which will allow users to turn the background music and sound effects on or off. This also means that we are going to add some audio to our game in this video. But before we get started with audio, I'd like to address a problem with the tile maps file that one of my discord members brought up. Basically, if I open the level1.tmx file here, you can see that all the objects in spawn points layer have a type property which we use to decide if the object represents a player, coin, enemy or door. And we had set this property from the tiled editor. But if I open the editor right now and select any of the object from spawn points layer, you will notice that instead of type, now we see the property name as class. Basically, tiled has made this change in version 1.9. If you want to understand why this was changed, I'll leave a link to the release notes of Tiled in the description. But the bottom line is, map files created or modified in Tiled version 1.9 and above will now use class instead of type. So if I just save this level1.tmx and go back to VS Code, you can see that the type property has been changed to class. And as a result of this, if I try to restart the game and load level1, it fails to do so. This happens because the parsing logic in tiled package specifically looks for a property named type. To fix this, some minor changes were needed in the tiled dart package, which I have already submitted. So to get them, we just need to upgrade the packages to latest version. We'll do this by running flutter pub upgrade major versions. And while we are at it, let's also add the flame audio package which will allow us to play audio files. Okay, so now if I go back to the spawn actors method of level class, you can see that the spawn point object now has a getter called class, which will allow us to access the class property. If you want, you can use this new getter or you can still keep using the type property. Basically, now both of them are valid and will return the same value. So if I undo this and launch the game, you can see that we are able to load level 1. And if I quickly change the code to use class instead of type, it will still work. Just to make it more clear, if I open up level2.tmx, you can see that unlike level 1, this one still has the type property. And yet we are able to load level 2 correctly. Basically, now it will work for old TMX files as well as the new ones. Okay, so that aside, now let's get started with adding some audio. First, I'll add the audio assets to this project. For that, let's open the assets folder and create a new folder called audio. I've already downloaded some free audio files that I'll be using. And I'll put the links to these assets in the description but you are free to use your own audio assets if you want. Just make sure that there are no white spaces in their file names. Anyways, once we have the required audio assets in the assets slash audio directory, let's go to the pub spec and add this part to the assets section as well. Okay, that completes the initial setup for audio assets. Next, we need to load those audio files and then play them at appropriate places. And since I am planning to add audio options in the settings menu to turn it on or off, it would be better if we have some kind of an audio manager which is responsible for checking state of settings before playing any audio. So for that, I'll first create a new folder under game called utils. And in this folder, let's create a audio manager.dart file. In this file, let's create a new class called audio manager. Next. To store if audio effects and background music should be on or off, I'll add two value notifiers of type boolean with their initial value as true. Next, let's add a static method in this class called init. We'll use this to perform some initial setup. First, 
I'll call demo audio dot bgm dot initialize here. This call is necessary for background music to automatically pause when application is terminated or sent to background. Then next, I'll load all the audio files using flame audio dot audio cache dot load all. This method needs a list of audio files placed under assets slash audio folder. And like all the other load calls, this one also returns a future. So I'll wait for this to complete using await and will make init as an async method. Now before we move ahead, let's go to game.dart and call the audio manager.init method from onload of our game class. We'll also add the await keyword here so that game starts only after all the audio assets get loaded. Okay, now back in audio manager class, let's add a new method called playsfx which needs file name of the sound effect to be played. Inside this method, we can simply call flameaudio.play and forward the file name. To make sure that we play sound effects only if user has turned sound effects on in the settings, we'll check the value of sfx here. Also, I don't want to create an instance of audio manager class to call this method. So I'll make this method and both the value notifiers static. Next, let's add one more static method called playbgm which will play the given file as background music. In this method, I'll call flameaudio.bgm.play passing in the file name. And again, to make sure that we play background music only if user has turned on background music in settings, I'll add a check for bgm.value. The major difference between these two play methods is that flameaudio.bgm automatically plays the given file on loop and is more geared towards long audio files. Now let's quickly add pause bgm, resume bgm and stop bgm methods. These methods will simply call the respective methods on flameaudio.bgm with resume method taking into account value of bgm before calling bgm.resume. And that pretty much completes all the methods that we need in audio manager. Now before calling these methods from the game, let's quickly add a new overlay for settings menu. For this, I'll create a settings.dart file in overlays folder and will copy code from the main menu class. Let's quickly rename the class name id string and constructor to settings. Then next, I'll modify the build method to display two switch list styles. One for sound effects and the other one for background music. Also, to make sure that these widgets get rebuilt on state change of the switch, I'll wrap them in value listenable builder of type boolean. The first one will listen to audio manager.sfx and the second one will listen to audio manager.bgm. In the on changed callback of the switch list styles, we'll just set the value of sfx and bgm from audio manager to the new value of the switch. Then next, let's add a button using which users can navigate back to main menu from settings. In the on press of this button, I'll just remove the current overlay and add the main menu overlay. Next, let's go to main.dart and add an entry for settings in the overlay builders map. Now let's run this and see how the settings menu looks. Okay, and for this to work, we'll have to complete the on press of settings button in main menu.dart. Here, I'll remove the current overlay and then add the settings overlay. Now, if I click on settings button, you can see that the settings menu is displayed with two toggles and a back button. But the title for these toggles is not visible. To fix this, I'll just change the default theme of material app to theme data.dark in main.dart. Now, you can see that the titles are visible. Okay. Now that the settings menu is working, let's start actually playing the audio assets. First, I want to start the background music when player clicks on play and the game starts. So for this, I'll go to the onload method of gameplay class and I'll call audio manager.playbgm passing in the name of background music file. This will make sure that whenever gameplay is loaded, the background music also starts. Next. Let's go to the update method of player class. 
here while making the player jump by setting its y velocity to jump speed i'll play the jump sound effect using audio manager dot play sfx and next in the coin class in on collision start if the coin collides with player i'll play the collectible sound effect similarly in the door class i want to play an effect to indicate that level has completed and finally in the on collision start of enemy class before calling hit method on player i'll play the hit effect Okay, this call should be enough to play all the sound effects and background music at correct time. Now let's see when to pause, resume and stop the background music. So first, when player presses the pause button on HUD, the background music should also get paused. For this, I'll call the audio manager dot pause BGM in the on pressed off pause button in HUD dot dart. Next, in the on health change of the same class. When health reaches zero, we pause the game and load the game over overlay. So along with this, I will also stop the background music using audio manager dot stop BGM. Then in pause menu dot dart, when player clicks on resume button, I'll call audio manager dot resume BGM. Okay, now I'll save all this and play through the game to see if all the sound effects are working as expected. First, let's make sure that both the toggles are on in the settings. And yes, they are on. So let's start the game. And as you saw, everything works as expected. Now let's turn off the background music toggle in settings and test if this works. And as you can see, now only the sound effects are playing. Similarly, if I turn off the sound effects toggle as well, we shouldn't be able to hear anything in the game. So yeah, that was it for this video and probably this series as well. Now we have a fully functioning platformer game along with audio. As always, all the source code for this project is available on my GitHub linked in the description. And I'll try to keep it updated as and when new version of Flame gets released. If you want some help or want to discuss anything about this project, feel free to join my Discord server. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this series and maybe learned something new. If you did, do hit that like button and maybe also consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in my next series.